Hey, this is Joe, and in this video, we're going to talk about some manufacturing and engineering issues of the Ocean Gate Titan submarine. You might ask what my background is. Uh, by trade or profession, uh, I was a software engineer, and I had a lot of experience in quality assurance. I also did a two-year program in composite man manufacturing uh, at a local college up in the Los Angeles area. If you've been following the news, you've heard more than likely uh, that there's some issues with using carbon fiber uh, in this type of vehicle, a pressure vehicle that uh, goes down very deep in the case of the Titan down to the depth of uh, the Titanic ship, which sits right around 12,500 to 13,000 feet. Stockton Rush, the CEO of the company, has come out and said that his use of carbon fiber is rather revolutionary. Many people, though, in the same industry say that this is a very uh, controversial subject of using carbon fiber. Uh, in the construction of a submarine. So let's take a look um, and discuss some of these issues. Uh, first off, let's talk about what actually is carbon fiber. Carbon fiber was invented in the late 50s, early 60s by taking very fine threads of rayon and heating them until they carbonize. And then they take these threads and put them together into what is referred to as a tow, T-O-W. What you see here is a tow of many very minute strands of carbon fiber. You'll commonly see in the industry uh, a tow be being rated as 1.5K, 3K, 6K, 12K. The K stands for thousands of threads. So that would be like 1.5 thousand, 3,000, 6,000, 12,000 threads. This is actually what is referred to as a tow of carbon fiber. It has many, many strands of very fine threads of carbon fiber. Nowadays, carbon fiber is made uh, of a substance, a man-made substance called polyacrylonitrile. Uh, referred to as PAN, P-A-N. I'll put a Wikipedia link in the description. If you're interested, you could take a look at that. So once they manufacture this tow, they can take pieces of tow and they can either weave them into a fabric uh, that's usually referred to as a bidirectional. You have a uh, toe going one direction, toe going the other direction. I'll show you some images here in a second. Uh, the actual toe can also be oriented in one direction and referred to as unidirectional fabric. I'll show a picture of that here in a minute. Here's an image that shows fabric, carbon fiber fabric, that has been woven into a uh, wolf and wharf pattern, meaning you have strands going one direction and strands going the other direction, and it's been woven together. Um, again, this is like a bi-directional fabric. You notice at the edges that there is stitching that hold together the strands of fabric. Carbon fiber has a tendency to unravel very easily. Here's an image of a unidirectional fabric. And as you can see, it's stitched together, and all of the strands are oriented in the same direction. Usually in a structural component, uh, you would usually use these unidirectional pieces. And then on the exterior piece, you would then put a bidirectional or cross-ply fabric uh, on the outside for cosmetic purposes. But in some cases, the uh, bi-directional fabric is also used for strength. Now, the interesting thing about carbon fiber is uh, its characteristics. Carbon fiber has a very high strength to weight ratio. What that means is it can, it's very strong, but very light. Now, the, also an interesting thing about carbon fiber 
is how you orient these these fibers or strands uh, to create a strong part. The strength of carbon fiber uh, is strongest along the length of the strands. So what you can do is if you're creating, for example, a chassis of a Formula One car or a wing spar for a jet aircraft, you would then align the length of these strands along uh, the orientation of where you expect the most stress to occur. So you can then align these strands in different locations where the areas of greatest stress uh, can occur. Those are the positives of carbon fiber. What are the negatives? Carbon fiber is extremely stiff. It's very brittle. Uh, it, it cannot stretch very much. So um, it's also subject to impact damage. So if you strike a, a component made out of carbon fiber, it can fracture uh, and break and lose its strength capabilities. So those are some of the uh, cons of carbon fiber. Here's an image of a failed drive shaft made out of carbon fiber. As I was mentioning, carbon fiber fails rather uh, dramatically. Uh, when I was in school, we used to go over to uh, the Boeing facility in Huntington Beach. And uh, at the time, they were making, uh, doing some experiments with wing spars for uh, jet aircraft by uh, making, picking many plies of carbon fiber, stitching them together with Kevlar thread, and then uh, impregnating them with uh, epoxy resin. Then they would take and they would test them in compression to failure. Uh, we went over to one of the labs where they did the testing of these uh, wing spars. And uh, just as an aside, uh, the sewing machine that they used to use to stitch these uh, pieces of carbon fiber together for the wing spars was 50 feet wide and uh, had many sewing machine heads on them. And they used to feed the carbon fiber down these machines and then stitch with Kevlar thread to hold the uh, carbon fiber plies together. And then they would use a resin transfer molding to impregnate the plies uh, of carbon fiber with resin and then cure them. So they sent the uh, wing spar over to this lab and we went over and were talking to the engineers. And they said, uh, when carbon fiber fails, it fails rather uh, drastically. They said that uh, when they put this wing spar under compression, they, they basically tested it to failure. When it failed, it failed with such an explosion that it shook the entire building. So again, carbon fiber is not very um, good when it comes to uh, impacts or uh, failures. It fails rather drastically. When you're creating a carbon fiber part, again, you orient your plies in the orientation to where the greatest strength is needed. And again, you lay multiple plies on top of each other, and then you have to compress them. You have to put resin on the fabric and then compress them. Usually, and as you see in this image, uh, you use a vacuum bagging material. Uh, you then impregnate the resin into the fabric, or there's another process where the uh, fabric is already pre-impregnated with the resin. And we'll talk about pre-pregs in a moment. But as you see here, they use a, a vacuum pump and they apply a plastic film on top of the uh, carbon fiber layup, as it's called. And then they apply uh, about 30 inches or up to 30 inches of vacuum. And then the, that compresses the plies of the carbon fiber together. And then as the resin cures, it holds those plies in place. Now the problem, one of the problems in carbon fiber part manufacturing is you have to be very careful to make sure those plies are fully compressed together and completely saturated with resin. If the part is either too wet with resin or dry, not wet enough, 
then the part becomes weak and you can get voids or delaminations uh, in the fabric between the individual plies. And of course, you can't see this. So usually there's a form of uh, NDI, non-destructive investigation, or NDT, non-destructive testing. And in the case of carbon fiber, they usually use a type of uh, ultrasonic inspection uh, where they bounce sound waves through the fabric and then they can tell uh, where the voids or delaminations or weak spots are in, in the fabric. And if there are any, they can be cut out and repaired. Here's a cutaway of the Titan uh, submersible vehicle. As you can see, the main body of the cylinder is made out of carbon fiber. And according to what I've read in the news, the uh, diameter is uh, eight feet and the carbon fiber is five inches thick. Now, there's no um, press that I can find that indicates how long this sphere is. But uh, by using a little guesstimation here, the entire length of the submersible is 22 feet. So if we look at the the length of this, it looks like it's maybe it's over half. So let's say maybe the the actual pre pressure vessel is maybe 12 feet. So we have eight foot diameter, five inches thick, and we have a length of approximately, and again, this is just a guess, about 12 feet. So we'll talk about some of the engineering uh, issues with a with a pressure vessel uh, such as this with a combination of titanium hemispherical covers with a carbon fiber center. Here's an actual image from OceanGate and this is the pressure vessel and it was created with carbon fiber. I've included a video in the description from their website uh, that they have uh, broadcast out on YouTube. So you, uh, again, I can't show that because I'm, I'm fearful of copyright violations, but I'll put the link in this description. Please watch that video um, before you continue with this video uh, because there is a lot of technique that is shown of how they created the pressure vessel portion of the, uh, using carbon fiber. They used a process called filament winding. And what they've done is they've taken uh, a wide section of tow, a continuous strand, and they have a mandrel, which is in the shape of a cylinder, and then they wrap the carbon fiber around and they move uh, the carbon fiber along uh, in the length in the direction of the length of the cylinder. Uh, and again, they created a cylinder, which is uh, according to their uh, specifications uh, in the news of five inches thick. So this was uh, an image and the video that I, I have posted in the description is of the making the Cyclops and Spencer Composites up in the Pacific Northwest uh, created their pressure vessels. And uh, we'll talk about how they created uh, the pressure vessels and what the problems uh, that I see are by uh, creating the presser, pressure vessels using filament winding with the process that they use with dry fabric. So go watch that video and then uh, we're going to, when you get back, we're going to talk about the issues. What they did here is, as you see at the top, uh, there's your uh, titanium flanges and there's also a titanium flange. Looks like they haven't put it in yet. Those flanges are bonded uh, with a epoxy adhesive uh, and they're slipped into the carbon fiber a cylinder and then they're bonded in with a type of epoxy. Again, we don't know what a, that epoxy is. Uh, I'm sure that's not mentioned and it's prob probably proprietary information. But this here is the cylinder pressure vessel uh, from the Cyclops. As I mentioned earlier, if you have uh, many plies of carbon fiber, they have to be compacted very tightly against one another uh, in the resin fiber matrix. So what you see here 
is one of the common techniques of compressing or compacting the fiber. This is a process called vacuum bagging. What they do is they take a piece of uh, film and they put it over the composite portion uh, and then what they do is they apply a vacuum. Now uh, at 30 inches of vacuum uh, you get um, a pressure of about 14.7 psi being applied to this laminate. So that is compressing uh, the plies of carbon fiber uh, down and make sh making sure that they are uh, when the epoxy is curing that those plies are very compressed, very compacted, and that way you'll you'll get hopefully no voids or delaminations uh, among the layers of carbon fiber. One of the other methods that is used to compact the fibers together is they put uh, the layup or the laminate laminated plies into a vessel that is referred to as an autoclave. Basically this is a very large pressure cooker that you can apply varying amounts of pressure and temperature and both together are used to compress the plies of carbon fiber and cure them at an elevated temperature. Uh, when I was at Boeing they had uh, autoclaves that you could drive a vehicle into they're so large because again they're doing fuselage uh, aircraft fuselages they're doing wing spars so you have to have a very large autoclave now the aerospace industry and the racing car or formula one industry when they make their chassis all of the components are put in an autoclave and uh, the material is heated and pressurized to cure and make sure those plies are compressed together. Now remember I said when you're vacuum bagging you only get about 14.7 psi. When you're using an autoclave you can get anywhere from 40 to 100 psi of pressure and again the Formula One industry and the aerospace ind industry exclusively uses autoclaves. Now after you watch the video of OceanGate uh, filament winding uh, their pressure vessel, they did not use an autoclave. They used vacuum bagging. So compare the difference in fabric comp compaction uh, they used 14.7 psi as opposed to 40 to 100 psi. So you're not getting as tight of a compaction as you are uh, by, by using an autoclave. So there right there is a, a discrepancy. Uh, they did not use an autoclave, so therefore their compaction wasn't as good, let's say, as the aerospace industry who exclusively uses autoclaves. Also, one thing that was exposed in the video of OceanGate filament winding their pressure vessel is they used a dry fabric and then they used the resin system and applied the resin to the dry fabric. Again, unless you're extremely careful, you're going to get uh, an inconsistent amount of resin to fabric ratio. And Again, if you're not very careful, you can have too wet a fabric or too dry a fabric, uh, which could, again, cause structural issues uh, in the composite material. Now, what you see on the screen here is what is called a pre-impregnated fabric. And when the, when the carbon fiber is manufactured, uh, after it's been created into a carbon fiber, they go through and they very carefully meter out an exact amount of resin uh, onto the fabric and this is done uh, by an automated machine process so your exact resin is exactly the same across all of the prepregs. Now what they do is they partially cure these prepregs and then they store them in a freezer and when you want to use uh, the carbon fiber, you pull it out of the freezer, uh, 
you then cut off the amount that you want. You have to let it thaw and warm up to ambient temperature before you can use it because you have to shape the carbon fiber to the part that you're you're making. In the case of the pressure vessel, they have to shape it to the, the cylindrical portion. Uh, then you very quickly take the unused portion and you put it back into the freezer. Now, the manufacturer specifies a limit of time that the fabric, prepregnated fabric, uh, can stay in the freezer. There's a freezing time. Uh, and then there's also usually, and again, it varies with manufacture and the type of fabric that you're using because there's many different types of carbon fiber fabrics. Uh, but usually a ballpark is you have 180 days of freezing time and 30 days of room temperature time. And uh, it wouldn't be wise to pull the fabric out at 150 days, take a section off, put it back in, uh, and then leave it for, let's say, another, uh, let's say, the rest of that uh, 20, 20 extra days. Because, again, over time, the, uh, the fabric, the pre-impregnated fabric, becomes uh, older, and the characteristics uh, of of this prepreg degrades. Now there's another rumor floating around that I read recently that in a later, uh, one of the later submersibles, uh, Stockton Rush purchased a bunch of out of date or out of spec uh, prepreg material and he used that in the construction of one of the later uh, submersibles. Uh, that would not be a wise thing to do as again any carbon fiber prepeg that is out of specification or has been out of the freezer too long or been into the freezer too long will affect the strength characteristics of the carbon fiber. Uh, again, the benefits of using the prepreg material is it's the the epoxy to fabric ratio is metered very carefully so you get the same amount of resin per fiber ratio exactly across all the plies uh, when you're laying this up. Now again, the, the Titan had five inches of uh, carbon fiber thickness, so that is a lot of plies. And if you watch the video, you notice that the carbon fiber toe is very, very thin. So that means they used a tremendous amount of carbon to wrap around that cylinder. And again, it was done with a wet process. So you have to question uh, how accurate is the epoxy to resin ratio in a in a filament winding process uh, where they actually wetted out the carbon fiber uh, by hand. Video's getting rather long, so we're going to go ahead and stop here. In the second part of the video, we're going to talk about some engineering issues with the open gate Titan uh, submersible. So hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time.